Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. This is a tutorial on uh, comparators and voltage dividers. And the reason for this video is because I am making a ton of tutorials based on blocks on my new electronic learning board. Which would be, uh, I will have it introduced next week, I'm just expecting the PCBs in very soon. Anyhow, uh, if you've seen my LM324 non-inverting amplifier tutorial, uh, you'll be a little bit familiar with the op amp. Um, this is the op amp can be configured to do many different things. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use it as a comparator. The output is always zero volts or VCC, which is our power supply for the chip. Uh, in this case, it's an LM324 DIP quad amp IC. Uh, our VCC. If, whenever you see the VCC symbol, automatically assume for this in this video that it is five volts. We've got a negative input and a positive input. On the chip, there's actually four op amps. This is just one of the four. We'll get to the pinout in just a minute. So, the way that we, how the uh, comparator works is that if there's a, a, a higher voltage on the negative input than the positive, then the output is going to be zero volts. If the voltage on the positive input exceeds the voltage on the negative input, the voltage at the output is high, five volts, or a one in digital terms. Zero is zero volts, one is five volts in this case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this piece by piece and I'm, by the time you've done this video you should really understand what's going on. Let's assume, assume that our power supply here is 5 volts, our VCC. VCC is a common term that I'll use reference to the power supply. 5 volts, this is our ground reference, and this is our output. Uh, basically, if there's more voltage here than there is here, the output will be high, 5 volts. If there's more voltage here than here, the output will be low, 0 volts. Uh, so, uh, what we can actually do in a circuit is, and if we go into the pinout, and we'll actually be doing this on a breadboard soon, uh, is add a, a current limiting resistor and an LED. Pardon my awful craftsmanship, that, if that's the proper word. Uh, let's say 390 ohms. This protects the uh, LED, but when the output is high, 5 volts, it'll light up, and when it's low, 0 volts, it will not emit any light. Anyway, let's try this. 2 volts. 1 volt. The, op the, the, the voltage of the positive input is higher than the voltage of the negative input, so our output is 5 volts, or VCC. Uh, let's try 3 volts and 2 volts. What do you think? Positive is higher than lower? 5 volts. Let's try 4.5 volts and 4.75 volts because the voltage of the negative input is higher than the voltage of the positive input. So what about 1.1 volts and 1.2 volts? This is what we'll see at our output. So in the cases of one uh, instances 1 and 2, our output will be 5 volts and that will light up our LED. And that's what we'll be doing in our lab. So now, before we move on with this, I'm going to show you a little bit, I'm going to talk a little bit about res resistor dividers, voltage dividers, because we're going to be employing some resistor dividers onto our uh, comparator circuits. We need to set them as reference points. So let me show you a basic resistor divider. A voltage divider gives us the opportunity to find any voltage between 0 volts and our VCC, our power line, uh, for a often for a reference point. And that's what we're going to use it for. We're going to create a, 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 a solid reference for either our positive or input volt or, or negative input voltage. But uh, first, we have to determine how to create how to design our resistor dividers. So VCC. Let's just say that's 5 volts. Let's say our RA is 10k, 10,000 ohms. RB is 10,000 ohms as well. I know just from looking at this that. Our, our div will be exactly half of our VCC, which is 5 volts, because it's a matter of ratios. Half of the voltage is dropped along the first resistor, half is dropped along the second. So after f uh, half the voltage is dropped along RA, we've got 2.5 volts left to be dropped along RB. But say we want different voltages here. We don't want just half. We want to set it at a very specific voltage. Uh, our, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you uh, how to calculate these values out. The formula is uh, Vdiv right here is VCC over R total times RB. 
Now as you see what I've done here is R total RT equals RA plus RB. So what you have to do is add RA to RB and that's RT. So take your VCC whatever that is and divide it by our total series resistance and then multiply it by the secondary resistor here, RB. And that'll see that'll tell you how much voltage is dropped along the secondary resistor and how much voltage you'll see on your resistor divider. Now this is useful because we're actually going to use this with our comparator circuit. So let's plug in some values. VCC equals 7 volts. RA equals 2,000 ohms, 2K. RB is 3,000 ohms, 3K. So use, use these three values to determine what your, your, your uh, voltage divider value is right in the middle of there. Your R total, 5K, your RB, 3K, and uh, your VCC is 7 volts. If you did this formula, you should end up with 4.2 volts. So that's what we'll see here. Let's try one more example, and then we'll interface this with our uh, comparator circuit. For this example, our VCC is 10 volts, RA is 2K, RB is 8K. Solve for R div. And then once you're done that, hopefully you pause it right now, we get the same we get the same answer, and then we can plug this into our op amp, or sorry, our comparator op amp. 8 volts. That's what we should get at R div. 2 volts is dropped along here, leaving 8 volts to be dropped along RB. So, we actually, before we plug this into an op amp, I know I'm dragging on, but this is, I, I think this is a good way to try to teach you. We're going to make a three resistor voltage divider just so that just so that you really get the concept here so this might be a bit more complicated but what I've done here is I have a three volt VCC three 10k ohm resistors um, now just from looking at it after you get some experience I know what the voltage is going to be at point one and point two uh, but what I've done here is I've created uh, two I know it's going to be a bit hard to read but I've labeled the resistors A, B, and C and uh, for point one right here right at the top one equals VCC over RT, so again you add up all the total resistors, uh, and then you multiply, you write that that and that number down, and then multiply it by this value and this value. So we'll know how much voltage is dropped along these two resistors, leaving that value to be right here. For our for our point right here, it's it's easy. It's more similar to what we were doing a minute ago. VCC over RT for our total times C, so we know how much voltage is dropped along this resistor so we know at what point uh, uh, what will be right here because what's dropped is dropped between here and ground so we know, we'll, we'll know exactly how much is left to be dropped along that resistor so three volts three 10k ohm resistors solve for one and solve for two pause it right now and uh, try to get those values it's all a matter of ratios one volt is dropped along here one is here, one is here. So 3 minus 1 volt dropped along this resistor is at 0.1, is 2 volts. Another volt dropped along RB, leaving 1 volt to be dropped along uh, RC, which is our second point, which calculates out to 1 volt. Anyhow, back to the op amp. Okay, so we have VCC here, 5 volts, which means it's also connected to this point. We have ground here, ground here, and ground here, and ground here. So they are all interconnected. These are reference points. Please solve for this, what the voltage is here, what the, vo what the voltage is here. These are two separate dividers, and once you solve them, uh, determine if the output will be on or off. Now remember, more, more voltage is the positive than the negative, output is on, LED is turned on. More voltage is the negative than the positive, LED is off. So solve those values and determine if the LED is going to be on or off. Write that down on a pad of paper and pause it. Hopefully you got the same numbers as I did. 4.44 repeated volts on positive, 4.17 rounded volts negative on, or on your negative. So there's more voltage on the positive than the negative, so the output is on. The LED should be shining bright. This is the pinout of the LM324. On the left side of the dip chip, the 14 pin dip chip, there is a notch. Uh, right below the notch is your pin 1, indicated by a 1 here. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Now, there are four op amps on this. This is the LM324 quad op amp, um, but pin four is your VCC, so that powers the chip. We're gonna, I mean, 
we would typically put five volts on there for digital purposes, especially if you were going to be working with circuits for your Arduino. Pin uh, 11 is your ground. And uh, so let's talk about each of the op amps. All of the outputs are on the outskirts, so output 1 is labeled X1. Um, the positive input for, for that first op amp is pin 3. The negative input is pin 2. Our second set of op amps are pins 5, 6, and 7. The uh, negative input for the second op amp is uh, pin 6. Positive is pin 5. And the output X2 is pin 7. And that follows that same, it follows that same uh, pattern. Uh, positive inputs, or negative inputs, sorry. Positive inputs and outputs on each corner. Anyhow, we're just going to use these three pins for our circuit. We're just going to talk, do a quick example of how we would hook it up. We would, of course, put 5 volts on pin 4. We would put our DC ground on pin 11. And this is how we would uh, simulate a circuit. And again, I'll make another table here. Okay, so pin 1, we've got a current limiting resistor of 390 ohms, which powers an LED, a light emitting diode, when <clears throat> the output goes high, 5 volts, VCC. And that will happen, of course, when the, po the voltage at the positive input is higher than the voltage at the negative input. So at, pos at our, our positive input, pin, pin 3, we've got 2 volts DC. At pin 2, our negative input, we have, well, you can figure it out. What do you think our voltage is there? We talked about the formula just a minute ago. Uh, since the ratio is the same, we're going to see half of 5 volts here, half of whatever voltage we have here. So half, 2.5 volts will be dropped along the first, 2.5 volts will be dropped along the second. So right in the middle we've got 2.5 volts. So if we've got 2.5 volts on our negative input, 2 volts on our positive input, our, our LED is going to be on or off. It's going to be off. So let's try another quick example. Okay, we've got a, our another res resistor divider. Top resistor is 10K connected to 5 volts, the bottom resistor connected to ground is 10K. What voltage are we going to have here, and what's the output, gonna be, output going to be, high or low? 0 or 5 volts if we have 0.5 volts at the uh, positive input. Pause it if you want, and then do the calculations, and then unpause it for the answer. If you got 0 0.454545 volts repeated at your negative input, uh, you were right. So, of course, if we have less voltage at the negative input than we do in the positive input, the output is going to be on. It's going to be high. We'll see 5 volts here. And, of course, your LED will be on. So, let's try one more thing. Okay, so in this circuit, we've got 2.5 volts at our negative input, uh, a voltage divider with two 10K ohm resistors, uh, 2.5 volts dropped along our first resistor, 2.5 along our second, so right in the middle we've got 2.5 volts, half of the voltage. Our VCC, of course, is 5 volts. Our output is here. Our positive input is connected to a variable source. So by that, we have a fixed voltage at our negative, a variable uh, voltage at our positive, and what, gonna, what we have here is a table. Zero volts is on the bottom here. Our fixed voltage is in black, 2.5 volts. The blue voltage that is swinging is on our positive input. And you can get, hope you can guess at this point what the green is. Once the voltage on the positive line uh, goes above the negative 2.5 volt threshold, the output swings high. It will go low again once the voltage on the, the voltage uh, going into the positive input goes below the negative threshold of 2.5 volts. So only for that short time where the positive input swings above the negative threshold will the output be high. So this will be our, our waveform. So if this is VCC 5 volts, then we should see 5 volts, 0 volts, 5 volts, 0 volts, 5 volts, 0 volts, and so on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you a, a quick, a quick uh, example on a breadboard. What I've done here is I have a uh, basically a uh, sine wave going on our, uh, or it's uh, not a sine wave, but it's shaped like a sine wave, like a DC sine wave. It's right, it's between 0 and uh, 3 volts DD, VDC. And I've got a resistor divider, a variable resistor, put on the negative input set to 1.5 volts. The uh, positive 
uh, swing coming from my function generator goes from 0 to 3 volts. So as soon as the threshold goes, uh, the voltage on the positive pin goes over 1.5 volts, which is fixed on our negative, the LED lights up. So if I turn the amplitude down, let's say below below 1.5 volts, so the peak of the, peak of the uh, signal is below 1.5 volts, it stops, uh, it stops lighting up, obviously, because the positive voltage never reaches uh, as high as the negative input voltage. I'll turn it back up. There we go. I can uh, even switch the frequency. So the, well, again, we can do this with an amplifier, but now we're getting a square wave. We're not getting an analog signal. We're getting a square wave. So we will be using this in the uh, in the learning board. Please do stay tuned. Uh, if you're interested in learning about electronics, you can learn for free from these tutorials. You can also buy the board uh, if you know someone who you who wants to get into electronics. Uh, I'm, these blocks are going to be very educational. They'll be able to explain each and every block, and they'll even be able to use the schematic that comes with the learning kit to build these using additional parts. So thanks for watching. I realize it's been a long video. I hope that, you, I hope that someone is still watching. And uh, take care and have a great day.